The problem with that becomes that if I log too many miles on this during workouts and don't save it for races, might need to chat with the wife about getting a, another pair of shoes for those races. And that's probably not gonna go really, really well. So I'm everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. My name is Matt and this is What Matters to Matt. And today I think I've got a pretty interesting video where I pit the Saucony Ride 15 versus the Saucony Endorphin Speed. Now, how can you actually compare these two, you might ask? Well, I actually did an interval session, an interval workout last week, this time in the Saucony Ride 15. Cool down. Wow. What a workout. Push it a little bit harder. That's okay. I kept my pace is up. I mean, I'll check when we get back to this and talk about it more. I definitely feel like I was able to keep my pace up. Okay. Cool down. And this morning did the exact same workout in the endorphin speed. Five, four, three, two. Okay, that was number five. I hope, I think, felt pretty good. Definitely going faster than I was in the Ride 15. Now by no means am I fast, I get that. But fast for me, fast for me. Now, if you know anything about these two shoes, definitely, if you were to take a guess on which shoe is going to do better, you're probably going to say the Endorphin Speed. It's built for speed, it's built for up-tempo stuff. I haven't been using this shoe a whole lot because it did so well for me in that marathon that I ran not too long ago. I've been trying to save mileage on this shoe and not log a bunch of long miles on it so I could save it for different races that I have. The Ride 15, if you haven't seen my initial review, I'll put it up top here, but to sum it up for you, what I was looking for when I bought the Ride 15 was something that was light enough and responsive enough that I could use it for daily miles, of course, but also some up-tempo stuff, like the intervals workout. And when I pit these two against each other, I just wanted to find out whether it was actually worth it to do those workouts in the Ride 15, or whether I should be sticking with the endorphin speed. The problem with that becomes that if I log too many miles on this during workouts and don't save it for races, might need to chat with the wife about getting a, another pair of shoes for those races. And that's probably not gonna go really, really well. So I'm kind of trying to convince myself that the Ride 15 is going to work really well to do some of those up-tempo workouts. There is a catch though. All right, so before we jump right into the comparison, I wanna give you a little bit of a description of what the workout actually was. It was an interval session. It was a 10 minute warm up with five times five minute repeat at threshold pace with a one minute recovery between each one of those threshold pace runs and also a 10 to 15 minute cool down. 10 to 15 minutes because I did cool down a little bit longer in the first one when I did it with the ride. That's mostly just due to the amount of time I had and how far away I was from the car but basically the same workout and the focus here is actually on the intervals during the meaty part of the run. Now to be 100% fair to the Ride 15, when I did that workout, it was a little bit later in the day. It was a little bit warmer. I was a little bit more tired. I'll actually put the video. I did a video for that interval session up top here, but I was a little bit tired. I taught kindergarten all day and then I squeezed that in between teaching and going to my second job. This morning, it was cooler, I felt a little bit fresher, so maybe a bit of an unfair comparison, but a lot of it has to come down to how it feels. How does it feel to actually run in the Ride 15 for something like this versus the endorphin speed? But let's dive right into the stats from those runs. So if we look at that run from a week ago with the Ride 15, we will see that it was a total of 53 minutes, 31.5 seconds. It was a total distance of 8.8 
four kilometers and an average pace of six minutes and three seconds per kilometer. Now, a lot of that is just kind of, it includes the warm up and the cool down. So you can take all those numbers for what it's worth. But when we go over to the run and we kind of narrow down to these specific runs, kind of ignore the bottom one there, number six, because I don't know whether I tap the lap button or what I did on my watch, but really we're looking at runs one through five were my actual interval sessions. And you can see if you average those five out, you're probably looking at about a five, 10 minutes per kilometer pace on those five runs. And if we look over here at my heart rate, my average heart rate for that was actually 159 beats per minute with a maximum heart rate of 178. And interestingly enough, up top there in the same screen, you will see that my best pace was four minutes and 42 seconds. Now I'm gonna address this even before I get to the endorphin speed stats is that I know, I know those are not incredibly fast numbers. I am just your average runner looking to do what he can to get a little bit faster. So it is what it is, but, but I, you can tell that I definitely put some effort into this run as I did the run that I did this morning. Now looking at this morning's run, overall it was 45 minutes, 42.5 seconds and 8.17 kilometers with an average pace of five minutes and 37 seconds. That average pace overall is quite a bit less, but you would notice that my total time was quite a bit less and my total distance was quite a bit less. That has a lot to do with the cool down period from that first workout just being a little bit longer. But with the endorphin speed, if I again look at the first five, which were my actual intervals for this session, you will see that my average pace actually works out to about 450, 451 minutes per kilometer for that average pace. So you're looking at probably about a 20 seconds per kilometer pace difference between this interval run and the one that I did with the Ride 15. Now, if we look over at my heart rate data, you'll see my average heart rate is 153 with a max heart rate of 175. Again, I spent less time in the cool down period on this particular run. So even though I spent less time and you would think that the data would suggest that my other run, my heart rate would be lower, uh, this one's actually lower overall with that 153 and up top, my average pace listing at five minutes, 37 seconds per kilometer, and my best pace of four minutes, 37 seconds per kilometer. Again, just a little bit quicker than I did with the Ride 15. The other thing I will mention though, when it comes to my heart rate is maybe again, a little bit of an unfair advantage because I did do this one early in the morning with the endorphin speed and it was quite a bit cooler and temperature seems to have a huge impact on my heart rate. So you can take that with a grain of salt. But now we get into sort of the meat of why I actually wanted to compare these shoes. It's been a while since I've run in the endorphin speed in terms of just taking it out for a workout. I, again, like I said before, I just wanted to kind of save it for races because I've been in love with this shoe so much. Now I have to say that this morning's run was super fun to have the endorphin speed out there and doing a workout with that shoe, something that does have a lot of speed and a lot of pep and a lot of energy return made that run super fun and super exciting. It made me really, really enjoy it. It had me thinking that I wanna go back and do another workout in this shoe as soon as I can. Now it does mean that I'm logging more miles on this shoe. It does mean that I'm wearing through it just a little bit quicker. And maybe I do have to look at another shoe for races, but maybe that's the answer is that if I'm gonna be doing up-tempo work workouts and I really, really wanna enjoy them, I have to be doing them in something that's a little bit faster than a daily trainer like the Ride 15. But here's the thing about this shoe or any shoe that's more of a daily trainer that doesn't have nearly the energy return, nearly the bounce that the endorphin speed is, is that I was watching a video just the other day and I'll try to put the video up here and certainly link it down below if I can find it. But I remember hearing in this video one of the explanations why you might want to use a daily trainer is something that's a little bit more stripped back. Now the Ride 15 is not stripped back. There's still a decent amount of stack height. You still get a decent amount of energy and you still get a decent amount of return from the shoe, but nothing like the endorphin speed. But the reason why you might want to have a shoe like this on your foot 
during one of these workout sessions is that when you actually get to race day and you're actually looking to pick up the pace, you can actually feel the bonus, feel the extra that you get out of a shoe with some sort of a plate in it, nylon or carbon, that you get actually some of the bonus out of that and you feel that on the day of your race. And you wanna do most of the, your own work when you're actually doing those workouts in a session while you're training for a race. But lastly, I do have to admit that this morning when I was done that run with the endorphin speed, and I try to think back of how I felt after that run last week in the rides versus this week in the endorphins, and my legs felt so much more fresher this morning. Even my feet felt so much more better. There's still a decent amount of protection in the Ride 15, but there's more protection in terms of just how soft and bouncy the sole is in the endorphin speed, especially you feel it when you do pick up the paces. So I felt a lot more fresh and I felt confident that I was gonna be able to run more miles later with my daughter as she trains for her first ever 5K. Whole nother story, not the intent of this video. But uh, so now I've got some choices to make. I've got decisions to make on exactly what shoe I'm going to use for what. Honestly, not a bad problem to have, but I'm super excited to bring this puppy, this endorphin speed out for more of my workouts. I'm also super excited to be logging more miles in this shoe. The Ride 15 is not a slouch, but certainly nowhere is near as much fun to take into workouts as the endorphin speed. That is it guys, that's the end of the video. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. My name is Matt and this is what matters to Matt and ultimately what matters to me most is my family. I'll see you in the next one. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.